Hey everyone, welcome back to Elemental Cartomancy. Um, it's Chris here and I'm coming on today. This is a request from Gerald. Um, this is a couple of hints or tips that I've got with regards to working with our best friend, the top box. Okay guys, so like I say, I've got two tips for you. Um, so this came about because it was a couple of weeks ago, I was live on my usual Thursday, and we were talking about this top box rage thing, um, and I hadn't really, I'd heard it, I'd seen it on YouTube and heard like Gerald and uh, I think Regina and Tanji talking about it, but I didn't really know what exactly they meant by it, so they like I got them to explain in the live and um, I said, oh, I've actually got a tip for dealing with top boxes actually. Um, and I showed them and Gerald said, oh wow, could, like, could you do a video on that? Like and add to the kind of a hashtag top box rage. So I thought, well, sure, why not? So yeah, um, I thought I would. So let me turn the camera down um, so you can see the table. I've got. I've actually got two tips. So the first one isn't the one that I was talking about on that um, on that live. This is something a wee bit different. So you know how every tarot deck comes with like a little white book, and it comes with like extra cards usually, maybe like title cards or extra like um, cards, like tarot cards that you may or may not read with. Um. So I actually take all of them out of my decks. None of the decks, I don't think, on my shelf have any cards in them that I don't read with. Um, I only keep the cards that I read with in there. And I mean, to be honest, the primary reason for that is because I'm murder for um, shuffling extra cards into the deck and then getting really annoyed at myself um, and having to go through and fish them out. Um, so I got to a point where I thought, you know, I'm just going to take them out rather than keeping them in there. So that's what I do, and I keep them all in here, and do you know what, it's actually really nice to, every now and then, there's the, the Centennial uh, little, little White Book in there. Generally, it's just extra cards that I keep, though. Um, so you see that there's lots of different, um, kind of a title cards, and extra cards, and whatever. Um, advertisement cards, and everything. Uh, that, that I keep in here, and like I say, it, it's sometimes nice just to have a look through and see what's there. Um, the reason that I mention this on this is because, obviously, um, by taking extra cards out of the deck, you you create extra space in the top box, and you know, how like, as much space as you've got, it's going to make it that much easier for you to actually get the cards back into the box. So there's tip number one, take anything extra out and keep it in a, a jiffy or a box or something. Um, and you can do the same with a little white book. Um, I generally tend to keep my little white books in with my decks, but you know, you can if you don't use them, then you can you can do the same. You can keep them aside. I know a lot of people just bin them actually, bin the little white books, but I like to keep them. So yeah. Let's have a look at the second tip then, and this is actually the, the method, this probably isn't actually the best deck to show you this with, um, the method to getting them back in. So the, the thing that creates all the hassle with top boxes I think is, you know, the, the, the flat, this flap, but on the bottom, you know the one that sticks up at the bottom of the box that you can see there. So that's what creates the hassle because you're putting the deck back in and it always leaves some cards like like sticking out and it's it's quite difficult to then manoeuvre them to get them past that that flap that's sticking up there. So my tip for putting the cards back in. So you look at your box and you you look and you see what side the the bottom flap is at. And here I've got it kind of a, at the top here. Right, 
So what I do is I angle my deck like that. So I have the cards, but you can bring them down on the table and just kind of slant them to the side like that. Have them angled so that the, the kind of a deck is pointing. You know, it comes up to the side that's got the, where the box has the flat. And that's the way you're going to be putting on. So then you just kind of a put your cards in and then let the kind of a front cards just fall naturally first to the bottom. Because there's loads of space, because these back cards aren't in yet, aren't in yet they gen they'll tend to fall, they won't fall on top of that wee flat, they'll fall right into the box and then you can just drop the rest of the cards in nicely. If you've got a tuck box that you're keeping with your cards, then that can just slide in at the back there, at the opposite side to where the flap is, because again, you don't want it to be stuck, sticking out. And that's, it's as easy as that. Um, the Mibramig um, Tarot, this, but I've got my own version of Tuck Box Rage with this. I suppose the other reason we hate Tuck Boxes is because they tend not to be very durable. Um, most of mine are in good condition because I don't tend to be like throwing, like, well, nobody throws, but I don't take decks about with me. They all tend to stay in here, in this room. Um, so I'm not travelling with them in a bag or whatever, so they're not really getting bashed about. Um, but yeah, this is an example, like they, they aren't the most durable. This came like this, um, to be honest, I, mean, I should really just, you know, use glue and re-stick that. Um, but this is a this is a box that doesn't have the the bottom flap because it's you know because it sticks together like this and it's not like just the same as this but at the bottom. Um, so this I mean I can even probably even uh, get a little white book in at the same time. That just all falls nicely into the the box. Um, so it's always nice when you get a, a top box like that. This, of all my top boxes, this is probably my, my nemesis. Um, and to be honest with you, I, th I don't think this top box is big enough for the deck itself. Um, and that's just the deck of 78 cards. I don't have extra cards or anything on here. Um, so, yeah, it's always a really tight squeeze. And for that reason, it can be really difficult to get the cards back in. Um, I've seen myself really fighting with them with this one. But... If we follow the same kind of a process, so the, the, the bottom flap is at the top here. So I'm going to angle my deck, we'll see how we go on with this. It's angled so as that, you know, it's going in towards the flap. Um, so, yeah, see, I'm having to force. So I'm going to let these ones fall to the bottom. Um, and then just kind of like give them a good shove in and yeah that's that's pretty much it that wasn't too difficult actually let's do mine um but you can see how tight like it's you know just putting that in uh, but yeah those are my two tips um i hope that they are helpful and useful for you Um, i hope that they maybe alleviate some of this hashtag tuck box rage stress um for anyone that's watching uh gerald you requested this so i hope that you've enjoyed this i hope it was everything you thought it would be um and yeah thanks very much to everyone for watching um i'll hopefully see you soon take care everyone Bye bye